How do you diagnose diabetes? Generally, two abnormal test results that demonstrate hyperglycemia are required to make the diagnosis. Either two fasting blood glucose levels uh, equal to or more than seven millimoles per liter, or two random venous blood glucose samples of more than 11.1 millimoles per liter. Uh, diagnosis can also be made with just one abnormal reading if symptoms of hyperglycemia are present. Uh, so diabetes can also be indicated by the presence of glucose in the urine, but this should be confirmed using blood tests. Because glucose and urine can appear also in some, certain kidney diseases. If renal threshold is low, with normal blood glucose levels, glucose can appear in the urine. Another test which was used quite frequently in the past, not so much now, but still used in some instances, is called OGTT, Oral Glucose Tolerance Test. So what you do, you ask patient to fast overnight, come to the clinic, you give them uh, a glucose drink of 75 grams of glucose. Uh, you take one sample before giving the glucose, and then you take a sample two hours later, okay? Or you can actually take regular samples, one hour, two hour, three hour, because you want to see how the glucose goes up and how it comes down. If the person does not have diabetes, the blood glucose level will rise, and then it should come to below 7.8 millimoles per liter after two hours. In a person with diabetes, the fasting blood glucose is raised, and after two hours, it'll be over 11.1 millimoles per liter. This is how it will look. So in a normal person, the fasting, say for example, is somewhere uh, below is 5.5 or something. It'll go up, and then after two hours, it is already below the baseline, yeah? In diabetic, it was higher to begin with. The fasting level is higher. When you give oral glucose challenge, the glucose level shoots up, and after two hours, it is still above 11.1. See here? It may come down gradually, but after two hours, it is quite high. What is prediabetes? It is a condition in which glucose homeostasis is between the normal level of control and that, and that seen with diabetes. So it includes impaired fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance. So in impaired fasting glucose, the fasting blood glucose level is raised, but the response to oral glucose tolerance test appears normal. The second one is impaired glucose tolerance. The fasting blood glucose level is normal, but when you challenge them with oral glucose, they have a hyperglycemic response, which is not as you see in diabetics, but it is not as you see in normal people, so somewhere in between. Okay, so this is known as pre-diabetes. Now this should be considered as a warning that type two diabetes is developing and modifiable lifestyle factors should be changed. Pathophysiology of type two. Type one we saw, the problem was destruction of beta cells, right? Type two, there are usually two issues at play. So there is a relative shortage of insulin, relative shortage, it's not, absence of insulin with an ineffective response to insulin at the target cells known as insulin resistance. The combination of slightly low insulin levels plus insulin resistance at the target cells. In most cases, the insulin secretion by the pancreas is initially increased. So when there is resistance, beta cells will try to produce more insulin to overcome the resistance, okay? So there will be hyperinsulinemia in the initial stages of type two to compensate for the insulin resistance in peripheral tissues. As time passes, this excessive production of insulin leads to fatigue of the beta cells, and that can reach the point where these cells become unable to produce insulin. So in longer term, insulin production by the pancreas is almost completely diminished as these pancreatic beta cells undergo apoptosis. Now, obesity and type two diabetes mellitus, they are very close friends. So the most powerful risk factor for type 2 diabetes is obesity, especially central obesity or abdominal obesity. 
The risk of developing type 2 diabetes increases 10 times with severe obesity. Over half of those who are obese will eventually develop diabetes. Okay, so they are very closely linked to each other. Excessive energy intake predisposes an individual to type 2 diabetes by contributing to obesity. In obese individuals, insulin is less able to facilitate the entry of glucose into the liver, skeletal muscles, and adipose tissue. So obesity is tied very closely to insulin resistance. And in these people, when they lose weight, the insulin resistance actually decreases. So insulin can actually act on the target cells. Um, Australia is becoming a leading country in rates of obesity with 25% of adults and 10% of children being obese. A number of risk factors are common to obesity and diabetes, such as an unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, smoking, and dyslipidemia. So it therefore comes as no surprise to learn that obesity and diabetes often develop together. Yeah? Diabetes is a term used sometimes to describe diabetes occurring in the context of obesity and it presents a substantial economic burden on the health system. Modifying risk factors associated with either diabetes or obesity will usually improve the other condition too. Now, you know, things like pre-diabetes, metabolic syndrome, unhealthy diet, some genetic predisposition, family history, and tobacco smoking. So all these come together to cause type 2 diabetes. So you have to manage all these. Now, monitoring blood glucose control, glucometer is, is a simple instrument which is available nowadays. And um, people with diabetes often use this glucometer to check their own blood levels. Uh, common times for monitoring is either prior to meals or two hours after eating. So a pit prick, a drop of blood, is usually enough to measure the, the blood glucose levels. Right? So you have usually a strip where you put a drop of blood, insert the strip into the glucometer, and it gives you uh, the reading on the screen. HbA1c, I already told you what HbA1c is. It's a measure of uh, glycemic control over a period of uh, 120 days, roughly. The usual value is about 7%. Thank you.